live from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 11 p.m. Now at 11, the hunt is on for this man tonight. He's suspected of attacking his wife with a chainsaw in front of their children. Good evening, everyone. This is CBS 2 News at 11. The attack happened this afternoon in Whittier, and tonight a neighborhood is on edge. CBS 2's Peter Dowd is live with the latest. Peter. Pat, police say right now that man is still on the loose. His wife is in the hospital undergoing surgery after he attacked her inside their home with a chainsaw. And it all happened in front of their children. Police say the gruesome attack involving a chainsaw happened around 3 p.m. Wednesday in the 7700 block of Milton Avenue in Whittier. 32 year old Alejandro Alvarez is suspected of attacking his wife at their home right in front of their three children, all under the age of 10. ¿Qué pasó aquí? Devastated friends of the couple who arrived at the scene say the woman's name is Gloria. And both she and her husband are from Mexico. They say Alvarez works in construction, and they still don't understand what could have possibly triggered such a violent attack. Investigators say by the time officers arrived at the home, Alvarez had taken off, and he later stole a blue 2004 Mercury Mountaineer, similar to the one seen here, with California license plate 8ABD233. It's pretty scary. It makes you think, what are they thinking? You know, and who does have a chainsaw lying around? Martha Garcia lives nearby and says she is heartbroken to hear about the vicious attack, especially since it involved an entire family in her normally peaceful neighborhood. We want to feel safe where we live, and we just don't know sometimes who our neighbors are. And right now, that woman is in the hospital with serious injuries. Again, police are searching for her husband and the stolen SUV is in. They're asking anyone with information to give them a call immediately. Live in Whittier, Peter Dowd, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Peter. Breaking news now on Stormy Daniels. Her attorney claims she was arrested tonight while performing in Columbus, Ohio, for allowing touching. Michael Avenatti claims the arrest was politically motivated. CBS News has spoken to law enforcement in the area late tonight, but has not been able to independently confirm that arrest. Now, more breaking news. The controversial chairman of Papa John's Pizza is no longer with the company he founded. John Schnatter resigned late tonight after admitting he used a racial slur while talking with his L.A.-based ad agency. CBS 2's Tom Wade is live at a Papa John's in Valley Village with the story and reaction. Tom. And Pat, as you said, Schnatter was on the phone with his L.A.-based ad agency trying to improve his image when he allegedly made these comments that he has now admitted to, and now he has resigned. Papa John here. People ask me all the time, what makes our better ingredients better pizza? The founder and face of popular franchise Papa John's is out. John Schnatter resigned after admitting today to using the N-word during a call with his L.A.-based ad agency back in May. CBS News reports Schnatter was complaining that a legendary fast food chain founder had used the word in the past with no public backlash. Forbes magazine reports the quote was, Colonel Sanders called blacks N-word. Sanders never faced public backlash. Reaction was swift. On social media, there were calls for him to resign. And on Wall Street, his stock dropped 10% today. His L.A. ad agency owned by sports and media mogul Casey Wasserman dropped him. The dizzying developments caught some customers by surprise. The ones we spoke with in Valley Village were disturbed to hear the news. You got something in your heart, you know, and I guess you, you know, you let it out. It kind of affects the brand, right? and uh, whether you want to support it by uh, giving them your business. Now, you might remember Schnatter is had a brush with controversy before. Just a few months ago, he criticized NFL players for kneeling during the national anthem and blamed them for taking a hit in his business. Reporting live in Valley Village, I'm Tom Waite. Pat, back to you. All right, thanks, Tom. Developing news, firefighters are making progress on a brush fire in Irwindale in the Santa Fe Dam Recreation Area. The 35-acre blaze is now 50% contained. It began at rush hour and could be seen from the 210 freeway. No injuries have been reported. Six flatbed trailers have burned. Crews will remain on the scene throughout the night. Heavy rain and strong monsoonal winds hit the mountains and deserts of Southern California today. This is Palm Springs earlier. Now listen to that. A day at the pool 
interrupted as the storms rolled through and dumped an inch of rain per hour. Yeah, howling wind and rain in Cathedral City. Shanlin Butterfly posted this video on Instagram. And this photograph from Twitter shows cars and drivers trapped on a flooded and mud-covered road in Death Valley. Let's check in now with CBS 2's Garth Kemp for a look at the conditions right now. Garth. Yeah, and it helped to cool those temperatures off in some spots where we got it, plus those downdrafts that came on those heavy winds you were talking about, Pat. Good evening, everybody. 75 degrees, sticky out there. Dew point at 65% above 50. You start to feel the humidity in the atmosphere and just the stickiness out there. So the humidity up 71% as well. Downtown, it's kind of a sultry evening, very Miami like. 80 in San Bernardino, same for Lancaster. Upper 70s across the valley floor. So not quite as cool as where we were last night. We have some more of this to go before we start to dry it out. I'll explain it all to you coming up just a little bit, Pat. All right, see you then, Garth. Well, tonight, four LAPD officers are being hailed as heroes. They rescued a man from a burning home in Silmar. And CBS 2's Rachel Kim has more on the dramatic rescue. As this one story home in Silmar burned Tuesday night, four LAPD officers saw it from a mile away and headed there to help. Do a primary search. Flames and smoke everywhere. And when neighbors told them a man was trapped inside, the officers found a way in by smashing the glass of a sliding door. The fact that somebody was in there needing help, that's pretty much what, what helped us get through, through the night. Even with flashlights, they had a hard time seeing because of all the smoke, and they were forced to maneuver around all the clutter inside the house in the intense heat. The officers were inhaling smoke as they tried to find the victim. Then they heard moaning. He was on the ground, unconscious, unable to reply to us. This picture of the victim is from one of the officers' body-worn camera. Another picture shows them carrying him outside to safety as flames shot out of a window. Officers Christina Shente, Kenneth Morales, Luis Lopez, and Jose Moya, truly protecting and serving. As a cop, I, this is what I signed up for. Uh, it, it, I don't know, talk, talking with the other officers here, I mean, it kind of seemed second nature to us. The officers were treated for smoke inhalation, but as you saw, fortunately, they are all okay. The victim also suffering from smoke inhalation. He is in critical condition right now. But great job by the police officers and firefighters. Reporting from Mission Hills, Rachel Kim, CBS 2 News. Overseas, President Trump is blasting some of America's top allies, calling them deadbeats. In particular, he took aim at Germany at the NATO summit. The president called out Germany for agreeing to a natural gas project with Russia and then expecting the U.S. to help defend Germany through NATO. His comments come ahead of next week's summit in Helsinki with Russian President Vladimir Putin. The Trump administration didn't meet Tuesday's deadline to reunite all migrant children under age five with their families. Just 38 kids of the 102 identified have been reunited. But CBS 2's Suzanne Marquez is live in the newsroom with more on this story. Suzanne. Pat, thousands of children have been separated from their parents, sent to government-contracted shelters or foster care hundreds of miles away. The administration has been scrambling to reunif reunify the families after missing the first of two deadlines set by a federal judge. This is the first meal Bernardino Contreras Trejo and his four-year-old daughter Fernanda have shared in nearly a month. After fleeing violence in Honduras, they presented themselves at a Texas border checkpoint last month asking for asylum. They were split up for nearly 27 days. Last night, they were reunited. But he spent most of the night last night reassuring her that they were together, they weren't going to be separated anymore, and that everything was going to be okay. In Arizona, Josue Rodriguez hugged and kissed his three-year-old son after being separated for 40 days. He says his son asked, Daddy, where were you? He describes the experience as a nightmare. Que en lugar, somos we're humans, we're not animals, he says, and not even animals are separated from their child. How are humans going to be separated from their kid? Trump administration officials say the reunions of separated families is moving slowly in part because of efforts to verify children are being placed with their biological parents. Secretary of Health and Human Services says he's proud of the work the federal government has done to bring families back together. One of the great acts of American generosity and charity, what we are doing for these unaccompanied kids who are smuggled into our country or come across illegally. Um, and so we don't have anything to hide about it. We just have to protect privacy. 
For the families who have been reunited, the trauma seems far from over. One mother told the New York Times her three-year-old son didn't know who she was. Another said her three-year-old daughter cried for the social worker and tried to escape her mother's embrace. An embrace many parents are still waiting for tonight. Pat. All right, thank you, Suzanne. A bizarre scene on the streets of Orange County, a hit and run, road rage, and a crash. The driver then blames a bystander for the destruction left behind. And a woman sent to prison for her grandson's death. Why more than a decade later, she was suddenly set free. Cyber thieves are targeting people buying homes. One local man lost his down payment, $60,000, all because of a hacked email. It was a wild day out into the deserts. Will we duplicate it tomorrow? We'll tell you coming up. And something new from Facebook. Try on glasses, makeup, and a lot more without going to the store. And here's a look at the guests tonight on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. CBS 2 News is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. Located on the web at mbusa.com.